Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So, I am back, and we're going to be playing something very interesting today. We are going to be playing DCS World, which is a fucking awesome game. I'm going to be learning how to fly the A-10, which is, you know, just, you know, the most awesome fucking plane ever built. You know, a plane that was literally built around a fucking weapon system. Like, how fucking awesome is that? So, I'm going to be learning to fly it today. Now, you guys might be wondering, what is this little glowy device on the side of my head? That is a track hat, which is going to be used for the head tracker that is currently on my display. So, I'm going to be able to look around the cockpit without having to do anything. You know, no weird inputs or anything. I'm just going to have to look around and there you go. It'll look around for me. So that is really fucking awesome, a really nice addition. So I'm just going to fix my chair. Ah. God damn it. Because leather is fucking sweaty. Makes me sweat like a bitch. So I am just going to close these things and we are going to get straight into DCS world. Ah, no, update later. I don't want you to update right now. Fuck off. And don't worry, you guys will see my uh, hotas in a second. If it could just, you know, pick up on the game, that would be nice. There it is. So we are in DCS world. So here's my little hand cam, which is actually going to have to be raised a little bit. Okay, just move that over a little bit so you guys can see a lot better. So you can also see my uh, keyboard as well. I'm going to put that on the stream chat. So, we're going to do the uh, training missions for the A-10. Okay, training. Instructions to the A-10C. We got the fundamental and the startup. So, let's start with this first. I'm not sure if that'll be useful. But we'll see. Who knows? Welcome to the A-10C Conversion Training Force. Over the next few days, we'll teach you to fly and fight in the latest incarnation of the toughest, meanest, and ugliest jet in the Air Force inventory. The A-10C Thunderbolt II, better known as yeah. the or simply the Hawk. In this brief introduction, we'll overview the A-10 and take a quick glance inside the cockpit. Please do not touch any input controls while watching this lesson. You can press the pause key on your keyboard if you need a break. Okay, so I think this is literally just an introduction to the A-10. Which, I mean, I already know what the plane is and I know how it works. So, kind of useless for me to watch. Yeah, I'm actually going to uh, quit. I'm actually going to do the A-10 startup. Which is what I kind of want to do now. This is what I want to learn in general is, you know, learn how to start the aircraft and learn how to start flying. Good morning. In this mission, we will practice the startup procedure for the A-10C. There's a lot to cover, so feel free to take a break by pressing the pause key at any point. It will be important for you to follow my instructions to the letter. Do not jump ahead and start mashing buttons and throwing switches. I will guide you towards the desired controls and highlights and by referring to the front dash and left and right consoles. 
You can pan around the cockpit using your view control commands to locate the switch. If you find it hard to hear my instructions over the background noise, exit the mission and turn down the world and in cockpit sound sliders to about 50% in the options menu. As described in the flight manual, the pre-flight check is normally performed prior to startup to ensure the aircraft is configured properly. However, for the purposes of this lesson, we'll begin the startup sequence with the aircraft's initial configuration set as it would be at the start of all missions. The startup procedure will consist of initiating electrical power, starting the APU, followed by the left and right engines, and finally powering up and preparing all essential avionics. Press the spacebar key when you are ready to begin. First, set the battery switch on the electrical panel on the right side console to power. This will provide power to the DC buses and the APU. Follow the highlight at the bottom right corner of the screen to locate the switch. Good. Now set the inverter switch on the same panel to standby. Actually, I should actually briefly adjust something. Uh, there is a zoom for... Uh, there's a zoom, which I kind of want to bind to something. Um... Axes the zoom view, which is on the. Uh, it's gonna be this one. I want to assign something to this. Can I really not? Why can't I add controls here? Ah, oh, there we go. Uh It doesn't appear to allow me to set a control to that. Only in the track I are. That's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. Or maybe the camera zoom view? No, it just does not... Al it just doesn't allow me to set it. That's quite interesting. So I cannot use this thing as a zoom button. That's quite funky. I don't actually understand why that is. Because I should be able to. I mean, over here it allows me for the track I are. But it doesn't allow me on the throttle, on the uh... It doesn't allow it for my uh... Neither my throttle nor my stick. I actually cannot select that. I guess I'll have to figure that out later because that is certainly something that I actually want to be able to modify. But I guess not today. This will allow AC power to be supplied to numerous aircraft instruments. It will also provide power to the engine igniters. Definitely going to want to have that. Power now running. We can take a moment to test the caution and warning systems to make sure that we will receive warnings in case something goes wrong during startup. To do this, press and hold the lamp test button on the auxiliary lighting panel on the left console. Take a look around the cockpit while you hold down the button to make sure. This is that annoying. The caution lights are functional, and you can hear an audible warning tone. Yes, there's a lot of alarms going on if I do that. Everything looks good. Now let's test the fuel indicator to make sure it's functional and accurate. The fuel indicator is located on the right side of the front dash. 
When tested, the two needles should point to 3,000 pounds, and the digital tonalizer readout should be around 6,000 pounds. On the oxygen regulator panel, set the supply switch to on, and check for our oxygen flow to be indicated in the flow window. And it is indeed flowing. Press the oxy in test oxygen indicator test button to test the oxygen remaining indicator. Watch the oxy low caution light on the caution lights panel to turn on when the indication falls below 0 0.5 liters. We also need to power the radios to communicate with ATC and mission assets. Set the VHF AM frequency mode dial to TR transceiver. Now repeat the process for the VHF FM radio. Set the UHF radio function down to main to power the UHF radio. Okay, that's on I think. We are now ready to begin the engine start sequence, but let's first close the canopy to minimize the noise. Yeah, that might be right clever. Again, hold the canopy control switch to lower the canopy or press left control plus C on the keyboard. Starting the engines will take several minutes and require a few steps. First, we need to provide power to the boost pumps of the left and right wing tanks and left and right fuselage tanks. I'm actually going to turn this guy up a bit because he's kind of not really loud. Find the four switches on the there we go. system control panel toward the top of the left console. Set all four switches to the up position. You, you, you. You. Before starting the engines, we need to start the auxiliary power unit, APU, which will generate bleed air used to start the main engines. As you start the APU, be ready to monitor the APU exhaust gas temperature, EGT, and RPM gauges on the engine monitoring instrument's EMI panel located on the bottom right of the front dash. Go ahead and set the APU start switch to start. Now let's return to the electrical panel and set the APU generator switch to the power position. This will allow the APU generator to power the aircraft and relieve the battery drain. However, the battery needs to remain on as a backup electrical source. While we get a master on the caution. Panel and in preparation of the engine start sequence, let's also set the left and right AC generators up to power. Once the engines are started, they will begin to turn the AC generators and take over from the APU to provide electrical power. Okay, okay those are so on. Break up the left engine. This is a very simple process initiated simply by moving the left throttle from off to idle or pressing the right off plus home keys. This will automatically start fuel flow, use bleed air from the APU to turn the fans, and then ignite the fuel in the combustion chamber. You can hear one of them spooling up. Just the left engine, engine right there. Pulls up, scan the engine monitoring instruments panel to watch the engine interstage turbine temperature, ITT, engine core speed, fan speed, and fuel flow gauges. Watch for the core fan RPM to stabilize around 60% when idling on the ground. You will also notice the left hydraulic systems pressure begin to build. This will normalize between 2,800 and 3,350 PSI. Oh, shut up! Once the left engine is running normal and stable, press the spacebar key to proceed. Yes, I know, Master Caution. Shush! Okay, looking good. We'll now repeat the process for the right engine. Once again, the engine is started by moving the throttle from off to idle, or in this case, pressing the right control plus home keys. As with the left engine, monitor the instrumentation as the right engine spools up. Also watch the right hydraulic system pressure to normalize. Once you have both engines running normally at idle power, you can do a flight controls check to test the responsiveness of the controls to stick and rudder input. Test the speed brakes and flaps. 
Press the spacebar key to proceed once everything checks out. So the speed brakes looks good. With both engines now running and powering the left and right AC generators, we can turn off the APU generator on the electrical panel and then the APU itself on the throttle panel. Okay, now the we'll power is up on. the control display unit, CDU, and the embedded GPS INS IGI systems. This will begin the automated built-in task bit and alignment processes for the navigation system, which you can monitor on the CDU display on the right console. Uncase the standby attitude indicator, SAI, on the front dash. To do this, turn the SAI cage knob to the left by rolling your mouse wheel down over the knob. Once uncaged, roll the wheel back to set the SAI aircraft indicator level on the horizon. Turn on the multifunction color displays, MFCDs, by left clicking twice on the power switch for each display. Why the fuck are we rolling? No! Stop it! We are not supposed to be rolling yet! Hello? Where's the speed brake? I completely forget what the speed brakes are. Shit! Why are we rolling? And let me just adjust my control. Um. Just needed to be reminded of the wheel brake, which is W. Not sure why it suddenly started rolling. Okay, one, two, one, two. While we are waiting for the CDU bit and Iggy alignment to complete, we can continue the startup sequence. Turn on the central interface control unit, kick you on the armament HUD control panel, AHCP, on the front dash. This will provide a central user interface controls to numerous aircraft systems, including the left and right multifunction color displays, MFCDs. The MFCDs are now on. In a few moments, they will display the data transfer system, DTS page, which we will use to upload navigation and weapon configuration data saved on the data cartridge from the mission planner. Now, set the integrated flight and fire control computer, IFFCC, switch to the test position by left-clicking once. The IFFCC provides weapon release calculations, attitude control, and HUD indication. In test mode, the system will run a series of automated bits, which you can monitor on the HUD. Press the ENT, enter button, on the upfront controller, UFC, to initiate the IFFCC bit. This will take approximately one minute. Yeah, this while takes a while. for the IFFCC to undergo the bit and the IGI system to finish aligning, let's set up our flight control systems. Set the left and right yaw and pitch SAS channels on the SAS panel on the left console to on. Now I'm going to have to really practice this. To set the flight controls for takeoff trim. Pull up, pull up. Let's upload altitude, data from altitude. the data cartridge. Oh, shut up. Load all on the left MFCD by pressing the option select button 10. The DTS will take about 15 seconds to transfer the data from the cartridge to the jet. During no this time, found. all the asterisks accompanying each data type on the left side of the displays will disappear. When all the asterisks reappear, the data has been transferred successfully. Once the data is loaded, set the right MFCD to display CDU data by pressing OSB 13. This way you don't have to take your head down to check CDU indication. The IFFCC bit is now complete. 
As you can see on the HUD, the exit function is currently pointed to by the HUD cursor. Press the Enter key on the UFC to exit this HUD menu. The IFCC is now displaying the ground bit menu on the HUD, where you can run a number of other bits if necessary. To exit out of this menu, press the Select Rocker key on the UFC down repeatedly until the HUD cursor points to exit again. Then press Enter to exit this menu. Okay. The IFCC is now displaying the main menu on the HUD, where you can set up various indication and weapon release parameters. Let's take the IFFCC out of test mode and set it to on by left clicking the IFFCC switch one more time. Okay, now it's properly on. Let's set the left MFCD to the tactical awareness display TAD page by pressing OSB 15. Now load up the flight plan. Right click the steer point switch on the AAP panel to set it to flight plan. This will set the flight route to appear on the TAD display. With our flight and navigation systems ready, we can prepare some of the combat systems for the mission. Set the countermeasure signal processor mode switch on the CMSP panel to standby. For a combat sorting, you may want to review or create some countermeasures programs, but that is for another lesson. Now set the four system select switches to on, middle position. Next. Set the Joint Tactical Radio System, JTRS, switch on the AHCP to on. This will provide power to the Situational Awareness Data Link saddle. With the IGI aligned, let's select CDU Nav Mode by pressing OSB9 on the right MFCD. Select the EGI as the primary navigation system on the Navigation Mode Select Panel. Next. Arm the Enhanced Attitude Control EAC switch on the Low Altitude Safety and Targeting Enhancement LASTI, panel on the left console. Note this switch is hidden under the throttle so you may have to shift your view position to see it, but it is still clickable with the mouse. Turn on the Radar Altimeter. At this point, we are ready to taxi to the runway. Set the anti-skid switch to on. Okay, no skidding. Now turn on the nose wheel steering by pressing the pinky button on the control stick or insert on the keyboard. That is... Click on the yellow handle to arm the ejection seat. This is very important. Taxiing out to the runway requires tower permission. So we will end our startup lesson here. Tomorrow you're going up. See you then. Okay, so we're actually going to start learning how to fly then. Also, I'm just going to see if I can set something to the zoom because I would really like to be able to zoom in and out with something other than buttons. So I'm going to go to, uh, maybe it's in general, and then access commands. No, A10 sim, access commands. There we go, now we can do that. Okay, access assign. Uh, joy slider one. Okay, then access tune. That is a linear curve, so say okay on that now we can actually change our zoom level by just pulling uh, the little thing on the uh... okay so now we can do that actually okay so we're going to quit and we're gonna actually learn how to take off now now I've already done this before which is fun but you know no harm in trying it again Welcome to the takeoff and basic handling training flight. Today, you're taking the A10C up for a spin. In this lesson, we'll perform a standard takeoff followed by some basic maneuvers at medium altitude.
Press the spacebar key when you are ready to begin. Copy that. I am ready. I'm ready. Things will happen rather quickly once you begin to roll, so let's review the takeoff sequence. After a final check of the instruments, you'll begin to roll at max engine power. Your main focus will be on using nose wheel steering to maintain the aircraft on runway center during the roll. Once the rudders become effective above 50 knots, you will disengage nose wheel steering. At 120 knots, begin to raise the nose by gently pulling back on the stick and setting a pitch angle of 10 degrees on the ADI. This will be a safety critical element of takeoff. Pulling up too fast can lead to striking the aircraft's tail on the runway or lifting off with too much angle of attack, leading to a stall and possible crash. Once the aircraft is safely airborne and climbing, raise the landing gear and flaps. Accelerate to 180 knots and maintain the speed in the climb to altitude. Okay, so that's what we're doing basically. Prior to starting the takeoff roll, a number of final checks are performed to ensure the aircraft's safe operation. Ensure the anti-skid switch is set to on. If not already done, turn on pitot tube heating on the environmental control panel. Now hold down the wheel brakes by pressing and holding the W key and increase throttle to 85% core RPM. Monitor your flight and engine instruments for any abnormalities. Look around the cockpit and check the caution lights panel to ensure no malfunctions are reporting. Press the spacebar key to proceed once everything checks out. Okay, engines at 85%. I think we're ready for takeoff, boys. We're going to take her up in the air. You are now ready for takeoff. Take a note of your current heading as you will maintain this after takeoff. To begin the roll, release the wheel brakes and advance the throttles to max. Releasing wheel brakes, throttle to max. Use careful nose wheel steering commands to keep the aircraft running straight down the center of the runway. Press the hold task pinky button or insert to disable nose wheel nose steering. steering off. Gently pull back on the stick to raise the nose to 10 degrees pitch on the ADI and hold it. Pulling back. Maintain 10 degrees of pitch. Raise the landing gear by pressing G and the flaps by pressing left shift plus out. The landing gear nose up. Sound while the landing gear or is gear up. Position. Adjust your pitch angle to maintain 180 knots indicated airspeed in the climb. And check the vertical velocity indicator to monitor your rate of climb. Your desired rate of climb will depend on a number of factors, including the aircraft weight, range, and altitude of the steer point. However, 180 knots indicated airspeed is a good average climb speed. We're going to throttle back quite a bit. Maintain a heading of 300 degrees and 180 knots. Level out at 5,000 feet. Scan your instruments vertically from the HUD down to the ADI and HSI, and then horizontally across the front dash from the airspeed indicator to the altimeter and vertical velocity indicator. We're up in the air, boys! Approaching 5,000 feet, let's level out here. We'll pick up some airspeed and max engine power. Leveling out. Flying over water can be disorienting, so let's turn inland. Turn right to 040. Turning to zero four zero. Watch your altitude. Maintain five thousand feet.
This is awesome, by the way. Really awesome. See, where did they want me to go? Like 4 0? So that's back out to sea. I do believe I'm going the wrong way. I don't know where they wanted me to go. Can I repeat the thing? Say in the briefing? No. Can I? I don't think I can. Fuck. We are climbing hard. Still need to modify like the curves a little bit. It's not yet set up properly. Is there like a uh, repeat instruction button? Because there is something pointing out there though. I think I see it on the nav. Hang on. Just gonna put her into a slight stall. Gonna descend to about five thousand. Watch your altitude. Maintain five thousand feet. Copy that, descending a little bit. Let's talk a bit about airspeed. While you may want to fly at maximum speed to get where you're going as fast as possible, you have to keep in mind fuel consumption and designated times of arrival. As such, you will generally fly at speeds less than maximum and preferably close to your cruise speed, which is the most efficient speed for your current aircraft payload and altitude. Alrighty. We are keeping her steady, boys. Doing a slide roll to the right. Let's try to decelerate. There are a number of ways you can reduce airspeed, including reducing engine RPM, opening the speed brakes, and pitching the nose up to climb. For now, let's simply reduce engine power. Pull the throttles back and watch the airspeed indications on the HUD and front dash begin to decrease. Pulling back on throttle. Good. Now let's accelerate by advancing the throttles back to max. Throttle at max. Now 
Now let's perform a climb. Take the nose up to 20 degrees of pitch by referencing the ADI on the front dash. Climb to 12,000 feet. That's a steep fucking climb. Watch the altitude and airspeed readings on the HUD and instrument panel. Take note of the altitude increasing and airspeed decreasing. Check the VVI to monitor your rate of climb. It's critical to maintain control of your airspeed or you will quickly approach a stall scenario. If your airspeed begins to fall below 160 knots, reduce your climb rate by lowering the nose to a smaller pitch angle. Pitching down a little bit. The A-10 does not have a very high thrust to weight ratio, so it cannot zoom climb like fighter jets. No, it cannot. With the hog lacks in engine power, it makes up for in engine durability and endurance. Yes. That it does. It really does. Level out at 12,000 feet. And leveling out. The A-10 service ceiling is 45,000 feet. However, given the nature of the A-10 design and function, you are likely to spend most of your time in altitudes below 25,000 feet. The next maneuver will be a dive. Before we begin, keep in mind a couple of things. Although we are 12,000 feet above sea level, the surface of the earth can be a lot closer, so we'll only drop about 5,000 feet and recover at 7,000. Also, our speed will increase rapidly in the dive and we need to be careful not to overspeed the aircraft. Overspeeding is highly dangerous and can lead to catastrophic structural failure. Yeah, I don't want that. Pull the throttle back and push the stick forward to make your pitch 20 degrees nose down. Watch your altitude decrease and speed increase as you dive. Recover at 7,000 feet. Three hundred. Starting to level Coming out. Up on seven thousand feet, level out. And level out. Not exactly the most beautiful stop, but hey, we're only a rookie. For our last maneuver of the day, we'll try a level turn. Turning is not difficult, but turning well does require attentiveness and coordination. The goal of a level turn is to complete the maneuver with minimal deviation in speed and altitude from your initial conditions. A level turn will consist of initial roll input on the stick, followed by a slight pull, and rudder input into the turn to maintain altitude and minimize side slip as indicated by the slip ball on the ADI. However, too much input on either the stick or rudder will quickly increase drag and angle of attack, leading to a drastic loss of speed and potential loss of control. Don't want that. We'll perform a 360 degree left turn from a heading of 040 at 7,000 feet and 280 knots. Go ahead and set the jet to these initial conditions. Copy that.
Crawling back a bit. And Gentle left turn. No, it didn't count. Oh, come on, bro. That was a beautiful turn. I'm being a noob here, probably. Come on, bro. Give me the instruction to turn. Very fine tune on the control. This guy's not giving the word. I mean, as I said, I already pretty much know how to do this, so I'm gonna do something a little bit more fun now. Um. Okay, let's uh, let's actually try to land this thing because that's a whole art in and of itself. I have actually done this before, by the way. Welcome to the landing training mission. In this mission, we'll practice landing procedures in the A10C using an instrument landing system ILS approach into Batumi Air Base. I've engaged the autopilot to keep us level and on course. Maintain airspeed around 200 knots as we prepare the aircraft for the approach. If you find it hard to hear my instructions over the background noise, exit the mission and turn down the world and in cockpit sound sliders to about 50%. Okay, throttling back to around 200. 
Landing is one of the more challenging aspects of any flight. A good landing will require careful control of the aircraft and use of various instruments in the cockpit for a precise approach under the direction of the Air Base Air Traffic Controller ATC. A landing consists of navigating to the destination airfield using TACAN or GPS navigation, configuring the radio to the airfield's ATC frequency, configuring the ILS receiver to the airfield's ILS frequency, navigating to the final approach fix as directed by ATC, and finally performing the final approach to fly the aircraft precisely down the glide path toward the touchdown point of the runway. Press the spacebar key when you are ready to begin. Because we covered TACCAN navigation previously, we'll use the GPS component of the Iggy to navigate to our destination in this lesson. The CDU divert page lists the four closest air bases programmed in the CDU as selectable waypoints. To access this page, let's first open the CDU page on the right MFCD with OSB 13. Now open the CDU nav page by pressing function followed by the 2 nav key on the UFC. Press OSB 10 to open the divert page. The divert page displays the closest four air bases with their corresponding bearing, range, and time to go numbers. Press OSB 16 to make Batumi Air Base your steer point. You can now use the navigation data block in the bottom right corner of the HUD to monitor the range and TTG to home plate. As indicated on the CDU FLD info, field info page, the ATC radio frequency for Batumi is 131.000 MHz. We now need to set our VHF AM radio to this frequency. Press the space bar key to proceed when the VHF AM radio is tuned to 131.000. Three one point zero zero zero. Good. We can now contact Batumi ATC for initial approach instructions. However, before we do this, let's also set up the ILS panel for the approach. ILS is a ground-based precision approach system that guides approaching aircraft to the runway using vertical glide slope and horizontal localizer radial signals. ILS beacons operate at specific frequencies that need to be tuned to by the approaching aircraft. Batumi ILS operates on 110.30 MHz. On the ILS panel, roll the mouse wheel over the left frequency wheel to first set the frequency to 110. Now roll the mouse wheel over the right frequency wheel to set the frequency decimal to 0 .30. Power up the ILS receiver by right clicking over the left frequency wheel. Let's now check in with Batumi Approach and call our flight inbound. Press the HOTES mic switch forward command or left alt and num plus keys on the keyboard to open the VHF AM radio menu. Now press F5 to select the ATC radio page. Then select Batumi Approach and finally F1 to call inbound. Take note of the inbound instructions you will receive. Press the space bar key to proceed once you've received the vector to the final approach fix from Batumi ATC. Press the escape key on the keyboard to exit the radio menu. We'll return to it in a few minutes. We can now navigate to the final approach fix which will be approximately 10 nautical miles off the runway. Pattern altitudes vary depending on the air base and local conditions, but are generally between 2,000 and 3,000 feet AGL above ground level. Whenever you're ready, press the spacebar key and I will disengage the autopilot so you can make the turn to the heading provided by ATC. Autopilot is off. You have control. Turn to the heading provided by ATC. Maintain altitude. I didn't actually know which heading they told me. That kind of sucks. So I'm already fucking this up, really.
What fucking heading did they give me? God damn it! I don't remember what heading they gave me. Fuck. This is what happens when you don't pay attention like a fucking idiot. Hang on, is there a way for me to check that? Hang on. Um, no, I don't think I can. Uh, did you guys pay attention? <laughs> because I don't know. And there's no way for me to check either, I think. Oh, fuck. Uh, just controls. Is there, like... Um, it's the radio. Fuck. <laughs> no, there doesn't appear to be. Fuck. Well, let's just try and hope for the fucking best, shall we? We also need to set the HSI course to the runway heading of 130 degrees in order to get correct CDI indication for final approach. 223. This, roll the mouse wheel over the HSI course set knob to set the HSI course needle to 130. Alternatively, you can press and hold the left mouse button while dragging the mouse left or right to turn the knob. Watch the HSI bearing window for the exact bearing. Let's also scale the TAD map out a bit so you can see the airbase steer point on the map as we approach. Make the TAD soy by pressing OSB 15 on the left MFCD. Then press hold test DMS down or the end key on the keyboard twice. Set the HUD as soy by pressing the hold test coolie hat up command or the U key on the keyboard. Because you'll want to concentrate on flying the aircraft once we turn on final, Let's discuss now what will happen as we near the final approach fix. You want to hit the approach fix at approximately 2,500 feet and 230 knots indicated airspeed. As you approach the final approach fix, the CDI needle on the HSI will begin to move down toward the course needle. You will turn toward the runway to keep the two needles aligned to pick up the glide slope along the runway heading. As you turn, you will bleed off speed to below 200 knots and extend the landing gear and flaps for landing. Press the spacebar key to proceed when ready. I guess Once so. Once the ILS signal is picked up by the ILS receiver, the glide slope deviation indicator will appear on the ADI. You will need to center this needle by gaining or losing altitude to see the pitch steering bar on the ADI for precise pitch control down the glide path. The bank steering bar will also appear on the ADI for precise directional control. Press the space bar key to proceed when ready. Oh boy. Um. I guess. Once established on the glide path, use the angle of attack indexer to maintain on speed approach, around 120 knots or slightly less, because we are coming in light today. On the AOA indexer, the up arrow light indicates speed is too fast. The down arrow light indicates speed is too low. The O donut light indicates proper speed. If both the donut and an arrow light are on, the speed is only slightly off from on speed. Press the spacebar key to proceed when ready. Copy that. In addition to ILS, the Tumi Air Base is equipped with a Precision Approach Path Indicator, PAPI Light System. PAPI is designed to assist the pilot in maintaining the glide slope during final approach. It consists of four lights lined up horizontally near the runway threshold. The lights indicate either red or white. Your goal is to see two red and two white lights going Hey Sarah, what's up girl? More red means you are below glide slope. 
More white means you are above glide slope. Press the spacebar key to proceed when ready. We'll keep the aircraft on autopilot until we get a little closer to the approach fix. If you wish, you can press left control and Z keys to accelerate time. Press left shift and Z to return to normal time. What's up with me? Well, learning how to fly a plane is pretty cool. We appear to be stalling. And I think it's right there that we're landing. So that is going to be where we're landing. That's the airport. So can you not show up mouse cursor? Not sure what my autopilot is doing. No freaking clue in the slightest. And we are stalling. Again. I think it's supposed to keep me at 8,000, but I doubt it is actually doing that. As you can see, that's the airport on our you thing there. Approaching the final approach fix. Select ILS mode on the dim set. The red glide slope warning on the ADI indicates that we are not currently receiving an ILS signal. The flag will be stowed and the glide slope deviation indicator needle will appear when we are closer to the runway. Whenever you're ready, press the space bar key and I will disengage the autopilot. Confused metal. Pattern altitude. Autopilot is off. You should by now see the Batumi runway at about your 10 o'clock. When the runway is closer to your 9 o'clock, you will be nearing the approach fix. Check that the anti skid Warning, switch autopilot. is set to on. Descend to 2,500 feet. Maintain between 230 and 250 knots. The CDI is moving toward the course arrow on the HSI. Turn left toward the runway. Reduce power to begin gradually dropping your airspeed toward 200 knots and below. If you overshoot the runway heading, perform a course correction in the opposite direction to realign the CDI with the course arrow. Cleared for visual, contact power. Glide slope deviation indicator indicates that you are above the glide path. Lower your altitude to center the needle.
I am not doing things right at all. Nope, we're overshooting. Shit. Yeah, I need to I need to read up on this stuff first, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> You know what? I'll put this thing down myself. Fuck it. And I know how to do this shit. And Don't worry. I got this. Watch. I can do this shit all on my own. Fuck you guys. Okay, I'm gonna start making a steady left turn. Not a very steady pull. Slowing down speed. Blowing gear, setting myself up for approach. Altitude, altitude. Shut up. Get some power. Throttling back. Flaring. Speed brake deployed. And wheel brakes. Seamus looks too slow, not too low. Don't worry, I got this. And... Roll, stop. Turning on nose wheel steering. See, I got this shit, don't you guys worry. Oh boy, don't want to accidentally toss her over. <laughs> See, guys, I got this. I fucking got this. Don't you guys worry about me. I have done this before. Another happy landing. Yes. I don't even know where that is, to be honest. I did not do this according to how I should have. But hey, do I ever? Okay, I did not do this as I should have, but hey, fuck it. I did it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do the GAU 8. Because now we want to fire some guns. And this is where I fangasm because the GAU-8 is like, yes. Falling rules is just too much effort. Yes. It's down without blowing up, so that counts. Exactly. So now we're going to learn the GAU-8, which I've used already, which is fucking fun.
Welcome to the training flight on the employment of unguided rockets and the GAL 8A gun against stationary and mobile ground targets. In this lesson, we'll review the HUD indications for gun and rocket employment, and then you'll have some range time to try a few strafing runs. Sweet! Before taking off, let's configure some settings for the sortie. First, set the IFC to test mode by right-clicking once so we can set up some gun options. Use the Select Rocker key to scroll down to the Weapons page and press the Enter key to select it. Now press the Enter key once again to enter the 30mm page. Sweet! Press the Data Rocker key to set the ammo type to Combat Mix because we are carrying live ammo today. Then scroll down to the Min Out setting and use the Data Rocker key again to set the minimum altitude to 500 feet. When finished, scroll down to store and press enter to exit this menu. Exit the previous menu using the exit line. You can now set the IFSI switch back to on by left clicking once. Okay! Let's also take a look at the DSMS to review our payload. Press OSB 14 on the left MFCD. We are carrying a total of four LAU-68 rocket pods. These are loaded on stations 2 and 3 and 9 and 10. Let's adjust some release parameters. Press OSB-1 to enter the profile main page. Press OSB-19 to select the profile, and then press OSB-3 to enter the profile control page. Press the OSB-6 rotary to set the release type to ripple pairs. Set the ripple quantity to 3 by using the 3 key on the UFC, followed by the ripple quantity rotary on OSB-8. Press OSB-3 to save the profile changes. Um... Uh, no. Oh, fuck, I just turned it off. No! Um... We have six rotary. Oh. Well, what is the rotary then? Negatory. Um... Uh, I may want to restart this because I'm already fucking up. God damn it! <laughs> Not a very clever guy. I am shit at following instructions! Fucking idiot! <laughs> Welcome to the training flight on the employment of unguided rockets and the GAL 8A gun against stationary and mobile ground targets. Yes, I know. In this lesson, we'll review the HUD indications for gun and rocket employment, and then you'll have some range time to try a few strafing runs. Before taking off, let's configure some settings for the sortie. First, set the IFC to test mode by right-clicking once so we can set up some gun options. Use the Select Rocker key to scroll down to the Weapons page and press the Enter key to select it. Now press the Enter key once again to enter the 30mm page. Press the Data Rocker key to set the ammo type to Combat Mix because we are carrying live ammo today. Then scroll down to the Min Out setting and use the Data Rocker key again to set the minimum altitude to 500 feet. When finished, scroll down to store and press enter to exit this menu. Exit the previous menu using the exit line. You can now set the IFSI switch back to on by left clicking once. Let's also take a look at the DSMS to review our payload. Press OSB 14 on the left MFCD.
We are carrying a total of four LAU-68 rocket pods. These are loaded on stations 2 and 3 and 9 and 10. Let's adjust some release parameters. Press OSB1 to enter the profile main page. Press OSB19 to select the profile, and then press OSB3 to enter the profile control page. Press the OSB6 rotary to set the release type to ripple pairs. Set the ripple quantity to 3 by using the 3 key on the UFC, followed by the ripple quantity rotary on OSB8. Press OSB3 to save the profile changes. PRS Quantity Let's now bring up the TAD page for takeoff. We are Run now ready to proceed with the flight. Takeoff runway heading for waypoint two. Climb to 6,000 feet. When does the stream start? This mind dullingly boring. Yeah, don't worry, it'll start soon. Okay, so we're going to set the wheel brakes to spool her up to about 85%. But I'm here for the booms. Don't worry, you'll get your shit soon. Okay. Releasing wheel brake, full throttle. I'm at around 90, nose wheel steering off, accelerating to 140, throttling back, pulling back on stick, wheels off, gear up, climbing to 6,000 feet. And Maintain 180 knots in the climb. Let's set the master arm and gun pack switches on the AHCP to arm. Be ready for a slight stick forward input from the flight control system as precision attitude control is engaged. Pack will help keep the aircraft stable when the first stage of the trigger is depressed. This will help minimize pitch and yaw moments during cannon fire and achieve a tighter shot grouping around the gun pepper. Level off at 6,000 feet and maintain max engine power for waypoint 2. And yes, we will get there, don't worry. I literally have to go through this first, but we'll get on some gun runs pretty soon. Approach to 6,000, leveling off. Autopilot is on. Let's review the HUD indication relevant to gun employment. If not currently set, make sure the HUD is in guns mode by pressing the whole task master mode button or M key on the keyboard. The gun bore line cross is displayed above the center of the HUD. This cross represents the longitudinal axis of the gun. You may have to turn slightly off course to see the GBL cross. The gun ammo type and amount remaining are displayed in the data block of the left corner of the HUD. So right there. This currently indicates CM1150 for 1,150 rounds of combat mix.
The A10C features four air-to-ground gun sight reticle options. The default and most informative reticle is the CCIP gun reticle, currently displayed on the HUD. Press the numpad asterisk key to zoom in on the HUD for a closer view of the gun sight. The main features of the CCIP gun reticle are the pipper dot in the center of the reticle and the unwinding range bar around the circumference. The four hash marks at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions reference the slant range to the target in thousands of feet. When in yeah, Stefano, what's up, dude? Unwinds counterclockwise. For example, if the range bar is at the bottom of the reticle, the slant range in feet is 6,000. The CCIP gun reticle also features a numerical indication of the slant range to target in nautical miles below the reticle. Finally, two moving target index marks inside the reticle indicate the aiming lead required for a moving target traveling at 20 knots in a perpendicular direction to the pepper line of sight. These are currently latched to the outside limit of the reticle at 3 and 9 o'clock positions due to the high slant range. Set your steer point for waypoint 3 and let's head back inland. I'm going to disengage the autopilot so you can make the turn. Yeah, thing is, I don't know how to do that, but... Uh, we'll just make the turn. Warning, autopilot. Autopilot is off. You have control. Warning, autopilot. Shut the fuck up. Should have taken the other lessons. <laughs> I don't really care at the moment. I was here for some guns. I think the waypoint is like right over there. As you can see, I'm just gonna follow that line over there. And it might not actually pick up on it if I haven't set the navigation point. Which would suck, but... You know... I don't really care. If anything, if I have to, I'll just, you know, start like a... Like regular mission and just gun some things. If I have to... I'll be running something. I think I figured it out on my own. Nope. So as I said, it might not actually pick up on it. Because I haven't set the nav point. I mean, if someone's like, yeah, you know, this is how you do it, I mean, feel free, but... <laughs> For now, it seems like we're sticking with this. Just gonna drop back to 6,000. Yeah, I have no idea how to adjust any of this. As I said, you know, I'll be practicing this more and so I can, you know, actually, like, properly fly. But for now, I'm just here to have some fun with this. 
And if anything, you know, all safeties are off, you know, I can still guns anything that I want. I have a feeling it ain't picking up on it. Also, I have descended way too much. As I proceed to not fucking pay attention to what I'm doing. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be picking up on it, to be honest. It don't look like it. Oh, there's waypoint 3, right there. But she hasn't yet done anything. So, I think I would have to do that first, which I don't know how. This is why the, you know, the tutorials are in order. I think it's gonna make me travel alongside the coast, it looks like. Yeah, it's not gonna continue, so we're just gonna gun something manually. Let's go, like, you know, bully like a random town somewhere. Because that is fun, right? Let's have some fun with this chick. With this bish. That's just guns like one of the buildings. Sounds like fun, right? And Let's, uh... We shall guns that building over there, that one right there. That's the one I'm going to run. I think that's a good idea. Like a random storage area somewhere. Just fucking have an A-10 come in and just gun run your position. I'm going to get closer to it and... Charles gonna be like, you're not supposed to do that. I'm gonna be like, well, fuck you then. And guns, guns. <laughs> and pull up, pull up. Guns. <laughs> that is cool, that is cool. I gotta say. That is really fucking awesome. And... Guns. <laughs> Bro, you will not believe how fun that is. Just having the sound of that thing going out, just brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
<laughs> oh my god, dude, that is amazing. That is absolutely fucking awesome. Hang on, let me just... Hang on, I can turn on the autopilot really quickly. Let me just... Even Steven around. Let me see, where's the autopilot? Uh, I forget where the autopilot is. Okay, now she should keep her steady. Ready, steady, go. At least it should. Nope, she's not keeping her steady. Okay, well, we're just gonna... We're just gonna do this. Oh, that is an amazing fucking sound to hear. And just knowing that I'm the one fucking doing that. Oh, yes. Just yes. Oh, look at the splashes on that. Let's see, do we have rocket pods? I think these are rocket pods. I think. No, that is... Oh yeah, I think I know what that is. And... Rifle! Oh, that's pack one. Uh, let me see, this is... Pull up! Pull up! Yes, I think I actually know what the, uh, what the key I'm looking for is. Because this is pack, this is basically supposed to stabilize your aircraft when you, uh... When you do something, and I think the center button here is the weapon release button. So if I am correct, if I do this. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. Or I think I was supposed to select them in my thingamajig. Uh, give me just a second. Um. Uh, how did I turn the weapons on again? Ah, there we go. Now they're selected. Okay, so now we have the actual missiles selected for us. So basically what this is going to allow me to do is actually fire the rockets. Now this is still guns. So I'm going to try... Yep, there she goes. Boom! Pull up, pull up. So that we can now do as well. We altitude, also have altitude. the missile pods on them. Woohoo! Yes! <laughs> so if there's an armor target somewhere, you just want to, you know, up. fuck them up. Just boom, boom! Altitude, altitude. Woo! <laughs> Oh, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. But the one thing I just can't get over is the fucking Gao 8 underneath of this thing just. Pull up. Pull up. Brrr. That altitude, is. Altitude. That is like the most satisfying thing in the universe for me. Just hearing the sound of that 30 millimeter cannon going off is astounding. Altitude. Altitude. That's how I turn on pack. Oh yeah, that keeps it much more steady. <laughs> oh, you guys are aware that I am loving this. I am absolute I I I enjoy doing this a lot. Altitude, you know, I was actually thinking of, um, you know, once I have a bit more money and I've got, like, you know, my laptop bought and all that stuff, then I'm actually going to buy a uh, Thrustmaster Warthog uh, joystick. So you actually have, like, the proper joystick for the, uh, for the Warthog itself. So, you know, you have the proper throttle and the proper stick for 
this exact aircraft. You have that stick and that throttle right there actually sitting on your desk, which is really fucking cool. <laughs> altitude, altitude. Ah, oh, isn't she lovely? And that is a floating tree right there. The fuck? That's not supposed to happen. Just guns like some random trees. I'm almost out of rounds, by the way. Altitude, altitude. And we are out. But yeah, this is awesome. Absolutely goddamn amazing. I I am enjoying playing with this. And we are currently out of um And we are currently out of out of uh rounds for the gal. So we'll just do some strafing runs with uh with you know rockets. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. Oh, don't be such a whiny bitch. I didn't even pull all that hard. This must be a terrifying sight, just watching, you know, this kind of an aircraft just coming towards, you know, your position. You know, getting ready to just, you know, strafe the shit out of you. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get court martialed for this. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. You know what? Let's try putting her down in like a like a field or something. Altitude, I'm, altitude. I'm feeling brave. Woo! Fireworks. Oh, I can see the splashes over there. They had like somewhere over there. Oh, you can actually hear the sound of the explosions. Nice. Oh, let's put it down on like that road over there. Seems like a fun challenge, right? Landing it on a on a strip of road. Because you know, why the hell not? Okay, throttling back. Really throttling her back. Point slight speed break. This road right here. Just hope the road is long enough. <laughs> it's actually going through a town, it seems. So I'm actually going to have to, you know, overshoot it slightly. In any case, we're on approach. Altitude, altitude. Yes, I know, bitch. Shut up. Okay, that stretch of road right there, that's where we're going to land. That's a beautiful straightaway right there. Give her a bit more throttle. Deploying gear. On final. Throttling back. Watch the wires. Get 
Giving her some power. Oh, power, 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 power. Wheels on the ground, speed brakes deployed. And brake, 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 brake. Nose wheel steering is on. And we're slowly coming to a halt. And full stop. Okay. Now, you guys want to know a quick way to... Might be smart to throttle all the way back. Alright, you guys want to know a really quick way to disengage your engines and stop? It's very simple. You just, uh... Pull these two. And your engines will disengage by themselves. And there you go! You turn off your engines! <laughs> okay, turn off the master caution. Uh, do you know what we're gonna do now? Eh, eject, eject, eject. See, can I... Can I do that by my seat? Where's the... Huh. Well, then we do it the manual way. Control it three times. And goodbye. Whee! <laughs> and shoot is deployed. And we are slowly gliding down back to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> All rise, and there we go. This is our little pilot guy, which has now successfully landed his A-10 on the road. <laughs> oh, it's so stupid, it's so stupid, but it works. I landed an A-10 on a country road. Fuck it. Okay, let's see if we can just do like an instant action. On the A-10. Let's do this. Let's just see if there's just some things we can guns. Because I would love to do that. We are already airborne. Two supply trucks are ahead of you at the fork in the river, left of the town, nine clicks ahead. Groups are marked with green smoke. Waypoint two, label supply, is the target location. Okay, we are going to guns. Contact target, 12 o'clock, 45. Right, throttle. Coming in for guns. Coming in hot. These guys are fucked. In before triple A. <laughs> that would suck. Altitude, Al, pull up, pull up. And guns, guns. And there appear to be some other things over here. So let's guns those as well. Not sure if those were supposed to be friendly, but <laughs> do I look like the kind of guy that would give a shit, really? For now, I just want to kill shit. Really.
Nice job taking out those trucks. The next target is insurgent patrol, two trucks and infantry. Altitude, Waypoint altitude. Waypoint three, labeled patrol. Pull up, pull the up. The target is marked with red smoke. Take it out. Those guys are pretty fucked. Took out the trucks though. At least it appears so, so we're just gonna go back and, you know, guns infantry because, you know, 30 millimeter obviously is an overkill for something like that. Also, we have a friendly around. Hello da, mein Freunde! Pull up, pull up. And guns. Altitude, altitude. Pull up, pull up. Fuck, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. I have to go for one more strafe and then I'll, you know, finish out the last guy. What should I think? Oh yeah, that guy's dead. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, effective guns on his position. Very good, very nice. Yeah, he's a dead little girl. You, sir, are going to die. Hear the other A-10 flying right over me. Altitude, altitude. Pull up, pull up. Pull up, pull up. <laughs> Look at him just standing there. It's just like, yeah, I'm fucked, aren't I? But yeah, the inconsistent speed at which my track hat moves is really... Pull up, pull up really makes it hard for me to kind of, you know, do precise adjustments like that. Because it's just so inconsistent with what I think it'll do. So we're actually gonna have to do one more run on that guy. Because I couldn't line it up in time because I'm an idiot. But you know, I'll fix that later when I, uh, you know, have the time to sort of play around with it. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. Pull up, pull up. Wow, that didn't pull kill up, him. That was up. a 30 millimeter, like, right past his face. Okay, you know what? Do I have rocket pods? What do I have on this thing? I have GBUs? Okay. But no, I want some rockets on this guy. This guy's gonna just be dead. I also got GBUs if I want them, so that's kind of cool. And the steady 30G pull. Snap off the wings now. You know, you can't actually do that, by the way. If I can, you know, kill this guy, I'll show you guys how to snap the wings off. That is one thing that I do know already. <laughs>
Probably not a good thing to have learned so quickly already, but I've seen it in a video. Whoa, that guy was close. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. Speaking from experience? No, not experience just yet. <laughs> not yet, my friend. Okay, that thing is out. And I am nearly empty on my guns. Um, I don't know, maybe altitude, drop a GBU altitude. on his head. That'd be fun to do. Just drop a GBU. So we're gonna climb. Let's drop like a giant bomb on his head. GBUs are huge, by the way. And I think I know how the GBU works. Whoa, that's really funky FOV. Shut up. No need for that. I gotta go, Sarah. Alright, girl. Hey, see you later. Peace out. As I, you know, go ahead and, you know, throw a giant fucking bomb on this guy's head. Which will be fun! It will be glorious. Alright, pointing her down. Down. And pickle. Good job with that patrol. Let's now try dropping a bridge. Drop the bridge at waypoint 4, labeled bridge. There are a couple AAA units defending it. Okay, now I'll show you guys how to snap the wing off. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna do a good bit of climbing. Hang on, let me just... Let me angle this right. Okay, so I'm gonna climb a bit. And I'm going to show you guys how to snap the wings off an A-10. It is not that difficult, actually. It is actually rather simple. So I'm going to rise to about, you know, this much, around 7,000. Let's climb to 10,000. Let's say like 8,000. So what we're going to do... Okay, there's only one thing you need to do. Nose down. Down, 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 down. Alright, watch. Watch this. Okay, and fall back stick. Wow, look at that. The wings didn't snap off. Did cause our guy to bitch out a little bit. Okay, I actually need more speed if I want to do that. Okay, so we're going to climb again. But I am definitely going to want to, you know, I definitely want to snap the wings off of this bitch. <laughs> also, we could actually shoot down our own guy if we wanted to. Let's see, where is he? Can we see that? He is like right on our two, uh, like right on our seven o'clock. Let me see if we can lock him up with uh, with an aim nine. I don't think I'm going to be able to actually lock on because he's going to, you know, he's going to try dodging me as well as possible.
Yeah, it's gonna be too much of a bitch to really hit, I think. Okay, so back to snapping my wings off. Um, I'm actually gonna climb to an altitude of 2,000, and I'm really gonna put the nose down here. Also, let me just turn off the M9, because that is fucking annoying. But yeah, basic premise is nose down, really down, get your speed up, and then pull full back. And that should snap the wings off. Okay, up to around 10,000 meters, of course. Okay, we are full throttle. We're going to go nose all the way down. I am pointing like straight down at the ground right now. Pull up, pull up. And back stick. Wow, she's actually not snapping off. That is surprising, actually. You know what? Guns, guns. Where's this guy? Stop whining, you little cocksucker. Pull up, pull up. Oh boy, we're stalling it. Oh boy. Altitude, altitude. I got her, I got her, I got her. Don't worry. Where's this guy? Right there. Hey, asshole, come here. Stalling, I know. I keep losing control over. Well, let's try locking them up. Splash! <laughs> Rifle! Man. Rifle! Splash! And he's down. Ejecting. Goodbye! Also, there's a bridge over there. I'm gonna drop a bomb on it. Okay, so there's a bridge, like, right below us. I'm gonna go drop a GPU on it. Because that's fucking fun to do. What happens when you put someone who doesn't know what they're doing into an A-10? They just, you know, start bombing. Well, actually, there's a bridge over there. Woo! I'm gonna go cut. I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go blow it up. Little shaking.
Looks like the perfect place to drop a bomb. Let's see this works. Pickle. Is it actually not selected? The hell? Said. It don't pickle. I didn't have the GBU selected. So we're gonna have to, you know, go around for another run and we'll drop a bomb on that bridge. That's fun. I should probably use the GBU-12, which is the man... Actually, the... I think the GBU-12 is actually its smaller brother. I guess I want to use the GBU-13. Let's try it. It's not releasing. Does that need to be locked up? I'm guessing it is, so... See, this would allow it to drop, so I know this is gonna drop for sure, so where's that bridge? Like right over that hill over there. Damn it, you just arrived. Well, Nick, you're about to watch me drop a GBU on a bridge. Which is fun. Did I end it? No. I'm still going. I'm about to drop a bomb on a bridge. Alright, there it is. There's the bridge. Could just, you know. And I'm actually out of rounds. Fuck. <laughs> well, shit. Okay, so there's our target right there. Slowly start. Oh, look at that splash. Look at those impacts. Person at five thousand. <laughs> Ayo, <laughs> angling down for approach. Pickle. Is that a voice crack I heard? Totally wasn't. Oh, I see that splash right there. Hold Holy up, up. shit. Oh, yeah, wine, you little shit. Here's a Mavericks. Well, they got the Mavericks and the GBUs, which I cannot release manually. They are actually... Actually, could I... I don't think I can deploy these manually. These actually have to be locked onto something. Which kind of sucks. As I proceed to nearly fly myself into the ground. Actually, ground save. I was thinking, are you moving the camera, but head tracking? Yes. Also, I just noticed that I am over time. Um, so yeah, let me just put this thing into like a, like a mountain or something.
Oh, don't worry. It's just like a 30G pull. Don't, no problem. Let's just put this bitch like straight into a fucking, into like a, like a building or something. That bridge over there, this seems like a good contester. Actually, I think I could actually jettison everything. There we go, now we're a lot lighter. So, bridge. Pull up, pull up. And control E Altitude. three times. Whee! Woo! I actually hit it! Ha ha! I actually managed to hit the bridge with my A10! Ha 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 ha! My life is complete. <laughs> that was perfect. That was freaking perfect. Look at that! Right on target! Sweet. Also, a uh, little trick here. Um, you can, you know, control E three times to eject from your plane, but you can control E three times again, and your character dies. <laughs> his soul ejects from his body. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, that was DCS World. That was really fucking awesome. I really enjoyed this. Your friend said, you have lost all your combat scores. Oh no! Okay, so that was really fucking cool. I gotta admit, that was a hell of a lot of fun. I wanted the bridge to collapse. Yeah, I didn't have any bombs and shit, so... I kind of couldn't get it to collapse. But you know what? That was totally worth it. So, I'm just gonna turn off my head tracking. You can actually see... I actually see the LEDs turning off and on. It was cool. It was sarcasm. Lol. I gotta be like that, man. Let me close my, my head tracking software. Yes, I know that will terminate tracking. Um, so, yeah, that was DCS World. That was a lot of fun. Definitely gonna be streaming this game in the future. I'll be doing some more practicing and, you know, actually properly walking through the tutorials and stuff so I can... You know, do things like, you know, set up my navigation and all that stuff and, you know, learn how to properly fly the fly and control the aircraft, which is something that I'm not really all that good at yet. So, as I've said, there will be, um, I'll be doing some more practicing in my own time. However, for now, I'm going to end the stream. Um, when will I be streaming next? I am not yet sure because the problem is I'm going to be going back to school in a week or two and I kind of have to figure out my schedule so I know when I can stream and when I can't um, so I kind of have to wait for that uh, and you know figure out a solid schedule for my streaming you know I'm not going to be streaming as much as I have been in the last few couple of weeks where I you know would stream every day I kind of can't because as I said you know I'll be having you know having to do homework, having to do my own projects, and I just, you know, I kind of also want, you know, some time off for myself. So, you know, I'm kind of going to have to figure out, you know, what is sort of a good schedule. You know, I at least want to, you know, get a schedule like, you know, Monday, uh, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday or something, you know, something along those lines. You know, really get a solid streaming schedule going with that I can, you know, keep myself to. Um, and of course, you know, I'll want to do some offline videos as well, you know, stuff like cracking the core and, you know, really start editing some videos so you guys can get some of the, some, uh, some compilations as well. Um, so beyond that, you know, be sure to look at the description where you'll find links to my social media, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, my personal Discord server, and of course my Patreon if you wish to support me financially or if you want to read a little story on how I got this whole YouTube thing started. Um, beyond that, if you like this stream, be sure to give it a like, and of course, if you want to see more of me in the future, be sure to, you know, press the subscribe button and turn on notifications, all that good stuff, and check out the rest of my channel for, you know, other live stream VODs and, you know, of course, compilations in the future. Um, beyond that, I don't know when I'll be streaming next, I'm gonna, I'm um, considering a Monday, you know, take the weekend off, you know, have some time to myself, etc, etc. Um, so that's when I'm thinking I'll be streaming next. Um, not sure yet what I'll be streaming, but you know, you guys will see the event appear and all that good stuff. 
Um, so beyond that, all I will say is thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next stream. Peace.